little warriors Changing our world day by day The way of the crypto warriors Can't rely on the bank, there's no way Hey guys, Ben Sawyer, RoadRoo.com With your morning heart disease and I don't have any coffee Amy was using the coffee machine Anyway, nothing waits on the Road Ruda. I have posted the Word Wednesday with Paige um, in this uh, episode, we talk about short selling, the crimes and the criminals behind it and stuff like that. Um, asset rehypothecation. You've heard it before. It's creating fake assets. It's all that goes on these days. That is our financial markets. Fake, fake, fake. Even into the silver world, which I'll talk about in a second here. All right. Uh, silver is flat. Why? Why is silver flat? Who trades the 99.9% of silver? The banking cabal. Back and forth with each other. High frequency trades. Good day to go buy silver, probably. If there was any. If premiums weren't 10 bucks plus. I put out a post yesterday, a video yesterday, talking about the 61, 61 million ounces <clears throat> deposited into SLV. Uh, it's a silver record for SLV. Uh, clearly, it's paper shuffling by J.P. Morgan and friends. Um, but they had to. They had to. Here's the the game is they short the COMEX. I talked about this in the other video. They short the COMEX. They, go, they get physical silver, supposedly, through J.P. Morgan. They lease it. Then they deposit it into SLV, so you end up paying for it. SLV is where the main crime is going on right now. <clears throat> Remember, when you buy a share of SLV, they're supposed to be putting one ounce of silver into uh, the warehouse. You don't own that silver. Who owns that silver? The authorized participant, whoever put it in there. But do they really own it? <clears throat> I'm going to show you a list of all the authorized participants. It's right here. There's 11 banks and one high-frequency trading company. The banks are the names, the criminal names you hear all the time. Barclays, Citibank, Credit Suisse, Goldman Sachs, HSBC, RBC, Scotia Capital, UBS, all the criminal banks. They all collude together. Now, here's how the game works. There is a pile of silver. Nobody knows who owns that pile, but it's, I believe it is owned by one single entity, and it's not J.P. Morgan. It is not J.P. Morgan. So. They rig the prices up on down, up and down on the COMEX. As we see here, the, at the end of the day, they're sitting with a gigantic short position. There's eight banks. All of them are on this list. This list, where is it? Eight banks hold 400 plus, probably 450 million ounces right now of short positions. They tell the COMEX regulators, hey, I own the silver over here. And, oh, by the way, I just happened to deposit it in SLV, and at any time I can pull that out and take my silver and run away. That's where the fraud comes in. Who really owns that physical silver? It's not SLV shareholders who just own a share. They don't even own that share, by the way. I'll get to that in a second. It's not the bank because <clears throat> they borrowed it from J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan has all the physical, but J.P. Morgan doesn't own the physical. That's the other thing. So J.P. Morgan, over the past eight years, has accumulated a massive stockpile of physical silver. We don't know the purity. We don't know anything about it other than on paper, it's what they have. Okay. So over the, the eight years, they accumulated massive amounts. Life Master said it herself when she gave an interview, when the, the Wicked Witch of Silver. She ran J.P. Morgan's commodities desk. She said, they were on a flat book. People don't see who our customers are. There's only one customer, my friends. Only one customer. And that's who owns the, the when you get down, after all the paper, that's the least. And a lot of these banks are leasing silver for J.P. Morgan to put it in SLV. So they have a short position on the COMEX. They have a lease position. With J.P. Morgan means they sold it that they they owe it twice, and oh by the way, they gave it to SLV to fake as inventory. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win this game? Whoever has physical, I, I've been screaming it. 
for so long. You have to have physical in your own possession. So where is, who owns this silver? It is the same people who own the shares of SLV. <clears throat> you don't own shares of SLV. Your brokerage house doesn't own shares of SLV. The DTCC doesn't own shares of SLV. Who ultimately owns shares of SLV? It is the same person who owns all the physical silver that's being passed around and leased out and, and rehypothecated. It is the same entity. The entity is known as, write this down, Seed and Company, C-E-D-E and Company. You are seeding over all your assets to Seed and Company. They own your mortgage. They own every stock, every bond, every bullshit-created derivative contract. They own you, Seed and Company. Now, Wall Street will tell you, oh, no, that's, just, that's the street name. That's the owner. That is the owner of that asset. This is why it's so important to get real assets in your own hands. If you go, they're doing it with cryptos now. The backed system is all about giving control to Seed and Company. Who do you think owns backed? Seed and Company. Who is Seed and Company? <clears throat> in the early 1970s, there was a congressional report to, to ferret out who was the actual owner. And they said it was one person at the time. One person. A lot of speculation goes to the Queen of England. Does the Queen of England, do, do all our taxes go to the Queen of England? Probably. Seed and Company. Did Trump take down the Queen of England? Maybe, could be. Is the Queen of England actually the ultimate holder? Or are there people above the Queen of England? The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers. Are there people above that? Are there off-planet entities above that? But if you're looking for the paper trail and where the paper trail ends, it's at Seed and Company. I have done so many articles and videos on the DTCC and Seed and Company. That's where the con is being perpetrated. The DTCC is supposed to validate every single one of these assets. These paper contracts that are betrayed. Look at <laughs> look at February 1st, over 2 billion ounces of electronic silver traded hands. And they dumped 61 million ounces of supposed real silver <clears throat> into the SLV through leasing it out of J.P. Morgan, Seed and Company, to these 11 banks that are authorized participants. This is not rocket science. It is a gigantic shell game. So all the silver in SLV is deposited there by these banks through either the lease mechanism or J.P. Morgan has the physical silver. J.P. Morgan controls all the physical silver. That's why they are the custodian of SLV. Basically, all these banks have double shorts because they got to pay back the lease and they're short on the COMEX. So how do they get out of their double short? They either got to buy it back, pay off J.P. Morgan for the lease silver. J.P. Morgan, I'm sure, has a clause that says you can't do that. I need the real thing. So they got to give back the lease silver that's an SLV to either J.P. Morgan or back into the COMEX. Either way you slice it, they're coming out of SLV. All these people are going to pull their money out of SLV. It'll probably be a force majeure type of thing. And then J.P. Morgan is just running the book for Seed and Company. The ultimate owner of all assets. It's kind of spooky. Very scary. How do you get out of that? Get physical silver in your own possession. But there's a problem with that too. Not only is it pretty much non-available unless you pay through the roof over spot price. But there's a hell of a lot of fake silver going out right now. I used to, way back when, I called them molly bars. I haven't been screaming, get U.S. Eagles from the distributor. U.S. Mint has shut that down. Get pre-65 coinage. That is the number one you can get, pre-65 coinage. Really hard to fake silver dimes with molybdenum. Molybdenum. Molybdenum has the same density of silver. So they'll take a molly bar, as I call them, a 100-ounce molly bar, coat it in silver, 
th- or a thousand ounce Molly bar coated in silver and put in the J.P. Morgan warehouse. How do we know that that silver is real? Because J.P. Morgan doesn't even know if it's real. Why? Because they tell us in the prospectus. This is the custodian's obligation at J.P. Morgan for SLV. The custodian is responsible for conducting certain limited inspections of silver delivered by authorized participant and exercising a level of care similar to that used of its own account, which is no care. However, and this is important, the custodian is not responsible for conducting any chemical or other tests designed to verify that such silver meets purity requirements referred to in the trust agreement. This could be all fake. Chemical tests do nothing to prove what's in a 100-ounce bar. The chemical tests are on the outside, the the silver coating they put on the outside of the bar. I came up with 19. Let's let's go look at it. If you go to roadtoroot.com and you go to the the public road, the first page, and you scroll down, you are going to see, and if you go to Road to Root Letter Archives, I mean, first of all, there's 3,000 pages on this website, so... It's a little tough. Use the search function a lot. There it is. Silver manipulation solution. 17 requirements for a freely traded silver market structure. I gave this to Bart Chilton. I gave it to all the CFTC commissioners. They're like, oh, it's too much trouble. Really? Look at these um, recommendations. Ending excessive concentration. That's the obvious one. That's the one Ted Butler talks about every day. Is a handful of banks controlling the price of silver. Require public disclosure. Make sure everybody on the market is completely above board. No more secret dealings. And brokers hate that because they want nobody to know what they have. Bullshit. But look at this one. It's um ba ba ba. Where is it? It's under the warehouses. Okay, here we go. Number seven, audit, verify, and certify approved warehouses. The comics approved warehouses are owned and controlled by the mo- most of the very same entities that are accused of rigging in gold and silver markets. Obviously, J.P. Morgan, who paid $982 million fine for rigging the silver market, should not be in charge of the lar- largest silver inventories in the world. This is not rocket science. The CFTC relies heavily on warehouse data in determining the dynamics of physical market. The potential for deceptive practices, false reporting, metal alterations, flat-out fraud are huge. The CFTC should monitor, verify, and certify all metal stored in approved warehouses to ensure the market has access and correct information. And then number eight, audit, verify, and certify physical metal hedges, commercial hedging, of mining production is the reason the futures and options markets exist. Without the need for mining companies to hedge the market price of their product, comics would have no reason to exist other than being a gambling establishment. If large mining companies such as Barrick, this is in the past, wish to hedge their production, the CFTC should investigate if the resources in the ground are verifiable, economic, and have little risk associated with extraction. The biggest thing I had was a global metal meltdown we are this is going to happen either we decide to do it or we are forced to do it everybody's going to have to melt down their metal gold and silver there's so much fake gold and silver out there great article posted uh, yesterday by egon von gretz grayer grayers 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 egon von grayers Paper silver is toxic. Physical silver is the investment of a decade. But he goes into how much fakes are coming out of China. It is insane. He talks about central bankers are the master forgers because they create money out of thin air. Biden and Yellen are going to print more money than any, any president in history. That's the thing. Every single president has printed massively more money than, they, than the one before him. It's infinity money. The wrong dose of the poison. Financial markets suffer from the wrong dose of poison. Trading financial instruments in the right dose is essential for efficient markets, but the heavily leveraged markets are extremely toxic toxic and kill the weaker patients. This is the kind of rigged markets where normal investors and small traders has no chance 
against the big players because they hedge players, be they hedge funds or central banks. We have seen how the Reddit group Wall Street Bets has taken on the big hedge fund boys. The Reddit forum is where a very great number of smaller traders discuss investments. Will the Wall Street group succeed in attacks on the silver short? I will discuss this at the end. He talks about David and Goliath's power. Yes, Wall Street Bets and GameStop. We knew they were going to stop the little guy, and they did. Toxic gold and silver. Let's look at toxic material that is distributed widely and could flood global markets in the next few years. I'm talking about fake gold and silver that could become a real pest. Greedy, greed clearly drives these unscrupulous manufacturers of fake gold and fake silver bars and coins. But greed is such a powerful driver that once you discover that people fall for your forgery, the Ponzi scheme grows extremely fast. Fake bars and coins were regularly informed of fake gold and silver bars and coins, mainly coming from China. Recently, an old trustworthy contact of mine informed me about his experience in buying silver coins from China on a website like the one below. He spent very little money, but just to test the authenticity, authenticity of the coins. Due to rising metal prices, there's lots of online ads for U.S. silver dollar coins like American Eagles, Peace Dollars, Morgan Dollars. The sellers are mainly in China. My friend ordered the coins from China, and then they finally arrived. Lo and behold, they were found to contain virtually no silver except the surface coating after thorough testing. The coins come from Shenzhen, China. My friend reported his findings to local authorities and secret service, and the site is now closed. But like a lot of these counterfeiters, they will most certainly pop up somewhere else. To buy U.S. silver coins from China is clearly a red, false, a red flag already. But since the Chinese are very big buyers of gold and silver, there's a lot of foreign coins on offer, and obviously not all are fake. Chinese factory producing fake gold. I had firsthand information about a case of fake Chinese gold a few years ago. I was in Sydney and interviewed by Channel 7 on Australian news television channel. The news crew had come back from China where they visited a Chinese gold factory. In the factory, they covertly filmed the vast offer of gold coins and bars with perfect markings from the major refiners in Switzerland, Australia, and elsewhere. They bought half a, billion, half a million dollars with the bars and coins for $500. For a layman, there's no chance of telling that the gold was fake. Freshly minted gold directly from reputable refiners in order to ensure you can't get that. Th you don't know. You have to drill every bar now. Nobody knows. Molly bars are all over. I'll guarantee you that all 600, let's take a look how much gold or silver our friends over at JP Morgan are supposed to be holding at the moment. Uh, where are we? Here it is. JP Morgan, for the shareholders of SLV, is supposed to be holding 729 million ounces of silver. All in 1,000 ounce bars, supposedly. But then again, go back to the perspectives. They don't even check it. They don't even check it. They don't drill those bars. They don't even do a chemical test on the outside. They read what's written on the bar and say, hey, look, we got inventory. If you go to my fake Molly Bar story, uh, where is it? Um, ba -ba -ba. There was a big conspiracy uh, that was exposed by GATA. And where is it? Rob Kirby. Rob Kirby's awesome. Rob Kirby's brother. He wrote an article way back when that over 1.3 million of the 400-ounce gold bars of gold-plated tungsten that were held in Fort Knox were actually fake. Is the gold in Fort Knox? The bars are there, but the gold's been melted down. It's a great article. It goes way back. Can he prove it? Yeah, but what what uh, judge in, the, in his right mind or any bank would ever say, oh, yeah, 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 that actually happened, or government. But he had a whole bunch of proof. He had all the receipts. Amazing stuff. 
This can be found at marketoracle.co.uk article 14996.html. This goes way back, November 2009. This is like midway through my career in gold. Fake everything. Everything's fake. You need to get the smallest denominations. of. If you have a 1,000-ounce bar right now, you don't know what's in it. Take it to your local coin shop and swap it for pre-65 coinage. That's the best thing you can do. Or one-ounce rounds. And, and weigh them. If you're not sure about them, weigh them. It's got to be one ounce, and, and there's all kinds of ways you can test a coin. The ping test. Look up testing silver. But the, the chemical test, where you just put a little chemical on the outside, that just measures the outside coating. It doesn't matter. For 100-ounce bars, you got to drill them to know what's in them. Anyway, that's where we are, my friends. It is insane. It's going to get worse. I knew this time would come, too. There would be a time, and that time hasn't come yet, but there will be a time when everybody questions the quality of their silver. Right now, everybody's questioning the banks and the derivatives and the fraud going on there and the short selling. There will be a time when everybody questions the purity of your silver in your own possession. It is so important because you don't even know. If you have a 100-ounce bar, you don't know unless you've drilled it. Have you drilled it and then tested the inner core of that bar? Not many people ever do that. Even the coin shops don't do that. <clears throat> I'm not saying everyone is spiked with molybdenum. What I'm saying is you don't know, and there are a lot that are. So that silver that you bought will be worth less on the resale value because they don't know. They'd have to drill into it. And at some point, all the, the silver dealers are going to require that. Get yourself the tiniest denomination, the silver dimes, quarters, nickels. Not nickels. Dimes, quarters, halves. U.S. American Eagles. One ounce rounds, but you better test them and weigh them and measure the size. You better be sure it's silver. Do the magnet test. Silver is not magnetic. So if you hold a magnet to a silver coin, it is not going to stick to the coin. If it does, that's not silver. That's an easy test. Get yourself a, a decent magnet and run around all your silver and wave it over the top and see which coins jump up on the silver, up on the magnet. All right, that's what I got for you today. I will be talking with Jean-Claude and David Morgan at 12 o'clock uh, Pacific time today about all this craziness in the silver world. So. Check that one out at Beyond Mystic 2. Uh, we'll not be doing the Jenny Moonstone interview this week. We couldn't get our schedules together, so we will do that next week. Obviously, lots going on in silver. Um, if we could get something earlier, I'll put it out this weekend for the private roadmap. Big Square, RoadRoad.com. I'll talk to you later.